Hey guys, it's Courtney, aka Travel Teach, here with you today to share with you some cultural misconceptions about China and how those can affect your palfish classroom. Uh, the inspiration for this video has actually come from my conversations between myself and teachers, and I really just kind of want to give you a little bit of what I know about China, which is limited to where I live and my two years of experience here. But I want to just give you a little piece of information, a little push in the right direction, so that we're not asking the same kind of questions or having the wrong ideas about China in our classroom. So the main three things that I wanna talk about today are the weather and geography of China, the language in China, and the intelligence level of Chinese students. If you're ready, let's go. So number one, talking about the weather and the geography. China is a huge country. Uh, depending on the source, I found that it's the third or the fourth largest country in the world by area. Uh, we already know that China is the most populous country in the world as of 2018. And the area in China, the different regions, the different people can vary a lot. And definitely it varies about weather. I've had some teachers tell me, Courtney, I didn't know that it gets cold in China. Yes, it gets really cold. Um, today, it's really cold outside. You can see I'm in short sleeves, but that's because I've got heating. And heating is definitely a conversation I would like to have with you guys. So the heating system in China is very different. As I just said, the climates are very different in the north, northeast, northwest, south, southeast, southwest, in the center part of the country. Everywhere the climate is different. And the southern part of China has more of a tropical climate. But don't understand tropical as meaning that everybody is laying on a beach somewhere with short sleeves and shorts all the time. No, that's not the thing here. That's not it. So in China, it's really interesting the way that they do their heating system. So I'm from America. We have central air and heat. But here in China, the situation is much different. So at the beginning of winter, or maybe even the end of fall, around November, I go and I pay a one-time fee that they will have my heat on. I have uh, heating in my house in the floors. They will turn the heat on from November 15th, and then it ends and is turned off on March 15th. So during that period, I will have heat inside my house. This winter, it actually got a little bit cold before that, and we were freezing inside my house. Not everybody has to turn on their heat, and not everybody chooses to here in Zhengzhou. I have coworkers, friends, and even my family who don't turn on their heat and who prefer to use the wall unit air conditioners for the hot air. Uh, in my own opinion, I would freeze if I did this, but that's just me. Um, however, a little bit south of here is where this kind of idea of central heat, any kind of radiated central heat ends, and they only have the option of having space heaters or of using the uh, air conditioner unit that's on the wall for heat. Those are their only options. So why do we see some students who have their jackets on, who are freezing inside their house? That's why. Maybe it's about their region. Maybe it's about their specific apartment complex. Maybe their parents have not chosen to turn on the heat because sometimes it's crazy hot. I mean, this is a real reality. So you can see here, I'm just wearing short sleeves. It's warm enough in my house right now to be doing that because the heat is rising up and coming from the floor. So something I really want you to understand is that China is a country that experiences all four seasons and it gets really cold. It also gets really hot, but I guess that's a conversation for another time. Okay, the second thing I want you to understand about 
cultural misconceptions in China is about the language. Okay, here on the mainland, the characters used are simplified Chinese characters, and a lot of people use Mandarin to communicate with each other. However, people do not necessarily learn standard Mandarin just because they grew up in China or just because they are Chinese. Every province has its own dialect. Every dialect is different. They are not mutually intelligible. Just because they're speaking one dialect of Mandarin or Chinese does not mean they can understand another dialect of Mandarin or Chinese. So, for example, Shanghai. Shanghai is very famous for having a dialect that is not intelligible by any of the other dialects. So what does that mean? Just because two people are Chinese does not mean they can communicate with each other. And in our classroom, I think that that means a lot because just because we use simplified characters, we show them a picture of something and that picture has some characters written on it, it doesn't mean that everybody can understand that. And that's really important. A lot of that can be about the uh, economic level of the family or what region they live in or how they communicate. I've tried to use the translation app on my phone and it's always a total hit or miss about whether the person can actually read the characters first of all and understand what I'm saying. And maybe that's not true everywhere. I'm not claiming to be a Chinese or Mandarin expert, so please don't get at me for that. But it's my experience here in Zhengzhou. So how does this impact your classroom? Well, first of all, yes, of course, we should always use simplified Chinese if we're trying to make a translation and use Mandarin. Don't use Cantonese. Cantonese is only spoken in three provinces, as far as I know. Um, and there's no power struggle between Mandarin and Cantonese. I've had some people ask me about that as well. Like, is there some kind of power issue there? No, there's not. Um, one thing that was really interesting to me and the, my inspiration behind telling you guys about this was talking with two of my Chinese friends. So one of my friends, her mom was a Chinese teacher, so she grew up speaking only Mandarin until she got to high school, at which point she learned Hananese. Hananese is the dialect uh, here in Zhengzhou because I'm in the Hunan province of China. And another one of my friends only grew up speaking Hananese and in high school she learned standard Mandarin. Uh, I'm not claiming that either way is right or wrong, but I just do want to let you know that sometimes if you use those characters, maybe they're not understood by all parents. And so this can be a big source of miscommunication. When you want to communicate with the parents or you want to uh, make yourself known in the class, I always suggest to contact admin or to contact the class teacher if you know who the class teacher is. Another interesting fact about Chinese and the Chinese language is that Chinese characters in themselves do not represent words. They represent morphemes. So if you're talking about their language compared to your language, do not think of the characters as being words. These are morphemes. For example, the word automobile, I believe has at least three morphemes inside. However, it's one word. So you can see it's not always that one character represents one word. Sometimes it is, but sometimes there are multiple characters needed to put the morphemes together to make one word. The last thing I want to talk about is the intelligence level of students. In my mind, before I came here, I had this idea that all Chinese students were geniuses, that they were super good at math, that they were amazing students and very well behaved in the classroom. And now that I've taught here for two years, I know that that's not the reality. You know, everybody has developmental stages that they go through. Everybody has different levels that they are at in their classroom. 
it's not that every student is sitting perfect and always like this in the classroom. Sometimes you'll have classes that are like that. Sometimes you won't. Another thing to understand about this too is that all Chinese students and all Chinese people are not math wizards or math geniuses. The system for math is actually quite interesting. Chinese students start learning multiplication at age seven. And from that period onward, they spend about 15 hours each week in and outside of the classroom learning math, mostly through root memorization. Another thing that's interesting about Chinese students learning math is that the mathematics information is taught in a conceptual and procedural method and it's taught in four stages along a certain period of time. So from the time that students are seven until they reach grade eight or about 12 or 13 years old, I believe, um, they will be learning math in four different stages that are meant to stack up on top of each other. The last thing that I think is interesting about Chinese students learning math is that they are in a growth mindset. This is really different and maybe there are lots of people who could say this is a little bit controversial for me to be saying. However, growth mindset here, what do I mean? I mean, if you don't know the information, if you fail the test, or if you want more knowledge, then you just need to study more, study harder, study more, study harder. This is why Chinese parents push homework onto their students because they believe that if their students study harder, that they can grow, that they can reach the not even the maximum potential. In growth mindset, there is no maximum potential. So this is really interesting for us to apply in our classrooms because those parents who are asking for more homework are perhaps thinking in this type of growth mindset way. Even if my student is the best one, even if the teacher only has praise for the student, then still my student can learn more if they study harder, which I'm not here to say whether that mindset is right or wrong, but you as the teacher do need to recognize that maybe that's what the parents have in mind with their growth mindset. So again, the three misconceptions that I so commonly hear about China and Chinese people are weather and geography, language, and intelligence level. I hope that you've learned something from this video. I'm not claiming to be the expert on China by this, and maybe people in different regions and different areas might have their own ideas. So if you do have your own idea, please feel free to use the comment section below and let me know what you think. Let me know about any questions, more questions that you have about China, because I can, of course, do another video about common misconceptions that people have. So thanks for watching. Please give me a like if you liked this video, and I'll see you guys next time. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks. Bye.